WKAB, TV 32, Montgomery. Newswatch 32, The Late Report with Michelle Hicks and Rick Derrick, Paul Osmanweather, and Chris Treston with sports. Good evening, I'm Rick Derrick. And I'm Michelle Hicks. Topping tonight's news, today began the trial of a man accused of killing his own three children. Quang Bowie appeared at the county courthouse this morning and waited quietly for the court to strike the jury. It was the first day of deliberations in the Bowie trial and the tension in the courtroom was high. At least 50 people lined the pews waiting patiently to see if they would be the ones chosen to determine Quang Bowie's fate. The jury selection began today in the courtroom of... I'm that authorities are searching at this very moment for, for an escapee from the Red Eagle Honor Farm. Debbie Herbert, Assistant Public Information Officer with the State and Correction Center, identifies the escapee as Terry Wayne Dwinslet. He's a white, 5'8", 148-pound male with blue eyes and light brown hair, and he was last seen wearing his prison whites. Herbert says Dwinslet was on his way to a disciplinary hearing in the cafeteria of the Red Eagle Farm around this evening when he grabbed a metal scraper and ran for the door. He was last spotted by the authorities near the Wetumpka Bridge. Dwinlett, who was serving a 42-year prison term for drug possession and robbery, is not considered dangerous. The man who allegedly stabbed and murdered Mark Stevens is behind bars tonight. If you'll recall, Stevens had been standing on the corner of Bell and Gordon last Thursday when a man approached him and stabbed him in the chest, subsequently killing him the following day. Yesterday, police arrested Willie T. Marshall in connection with that murder. 32-year-old Marshall was apprehended after investigators combed his tracks. Marshall is in jail this evening under a $55,000 bond. The woman charged in connection with comedian John Belushi's death has made a deal with prosecutors in Los Angeles. Authorities say a plea bargain agreement was reached with Kathy Evelyn Smith, entering a plea of guilty to involuntary manslaughter and drug charges. Three drug charges, as a matter of fact. Prosecution spokesman a, uh, Al Albergate says Smith will enter the pleas Wednesday. He says there's no agreement on the sentence she will get. That'll be left up to the judge. Smith's attorney, who has been negotiating the agreement, was not available for comment. A spy or perhaps a terrorist. Police this evening aren't sure who the woman is who walked into the Fort Taylor Hardin Armory yesterday. They do know that she is from the Middle East and is driving around town in a borrowed truck. The woman apparently told a local man that she was from out of town and needed to borrow his truck. She then drove over to the Fort Taylor Hardin Armory, walked inside, and asked questions about the building. How many people work there? Who was on duty and at what times? She then proceeded to take pictures of the building. Police have warned the National Guard, and they're on the lookout for that woman right now. The commission looking into the disaster of the space shuttle Challenger released its report today in Washington. The report urges changes in personnel and, in quote, indoctrination at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. The panel's report said management at Marshall was isolated from the rest of the space agency and conducted inadequate tests of the booster rockets, failing to reach the temperatures similar to the sub-freezing readings taken before the ill-fated January 28th launch. Former astronaut and now Senator John Glenn commented on the contents of the commission's findings. Special booster manager Lawrence B. Malloy, who has already been demoted to a special assistantship in another department at Marshall. The commission said Malloy falsely testified that he had warned top shuttle executives of problems in the rocket's joints. Sources say the Presidential Challenger Commission blames the January explosion on a leak of hot gases from a shuttle booster rocket. A report released by the Alabama State Troopers reveals that the driver of a Department of Corrections van was speeding just before an accident which killed three inmates. Troopers estimate that the driver, Sylvester Nettles, was driving 60 in a 55 mile per hour zone when the van clipped a car and overturned on a North Montgomery road. 16 people were riding in that van which was taking inmates back to Montgomery's Red Eagle Honor Farm after a softball game at the Elmore County Prison on May 25th. Before any action is contemplated, against Nettles. A spokesperson for the State Department of Public Safety said a more in-depth traffic homicide investigation must first be completed. Fire destroyed a Chicago landmark church early this morning. The 107-year-old Holy Angels Roman Catholic Church was gutted despite the efforts of 160 firemen who battled the blaze for over an hour. 
The church serves more than 4,000 parishioners and is home to the largest black Catholic school in the country. Its pastor, the Reverend George Clements, says he hopes it can be... What happens when newborn babies arrive in the world and are gravely ill and nobody wants to treat them, including doctors and parents? Dick Sanders reports tonight on what the Reagan administration is facing in trying to resolve this problem. Since 19... Thank you. Dozens of foster parents from around Montgomery gathered to celebrate the 11th anniversary of the Montgomery County Foster Parents Association. Two groups were in the spotlight. The National Council of Jewish Women and the East Montgomery Kiwanis Club were honored for their volunteer work. But according to Jennifer Littleton, president of the association, there are still many hurdles to overcome. Lack of foster homes for the children. Um, today we had 10 children that needed placing and we are real short on foster homes and placements for these children and we really need a lot of help to get some more foster homes and people to take these children in. Littleton says that the children belong to the state but add that no one wants to pick up the tab to provide proper care. against George Wallace Jr. says too much tax revenue is being wasted. He says that if he's elected to the polls, waste in Montgomery will come to a screeching halt. I'm proposing an expanded role for the treasurer's office, not through any new legislation, but through a new utilization of the present powers of that office. The Ziegler says that no state office has the ability to control waste in Montgomery. While at this morning's news conference, Ziegler questioned the outcome of last week's primary, adding the final outcome is suspect. With 90% of the votes counted, Ziegler led George Wallace Jr. by 7,000 votes. When all the votes were counted, he trailed by 30,000 votes. Although he says he has no hard evidence, Ziegler is sure that the Wallace political machine may have manipulated voters. He believes the outcome may be a last-ditch effort for the Wallace family to control the strings of state finances. Just today, the governor placed the director of Department of Economic and Community Affairs on administrative leave. Bill Rushton has reportedly been involved in the gubernatorial campaign of Lieutenant Governor Bill Baxley. Governor Wallace informed all members of his cabinet some time ago that he didn't want them involved in the campaign efforts of any candidate. Press Secretary Frank Maston. He is on leave without pay. The seat is underway as runoff candidate Jim Folsom Jr. challenges his opponent, Senator John Teague, to step into the ring and disclose his financial, academic, and work background. Teague had asked Folsom to debate his Sunday night on public television, but Folsom says first he wants all the facts about each candidate to be known to the public before he will enter the ring. I want to show the people of Alabama I've been working. I want to show them my substance, and I want to show them my background. And in other news, if you haven't received your state tax refund yet, don't fear. Reporter Harry D'Antonio says returns filed in April should be mailed out by the end of this month. The State Department of Revenue is ahead of schedule. Over 1.3 million tax returns have been filed this year, close to 30,000 more than last year. The reason, according to Gene Crawford, information officer for the revenue, $90 million in state tax revenue. Most of that money will be put to a good use. A new computer system is in the works. It will speed up the processing of tax returns beginning next year. But that can't help you if your return is done incorrectly. Over 30% of all returns are flawed. The biggest mistake? Forgetting to sign that good old 1040. Federal tax returns are also ahead of schedule. Over 99% of the returns have been mailed out. Harry D'Antonio, Newswatch 32. With the AT&T strike, long-distance competitors to the long-distance service should be doing better, or should they? Tommy Bones, sales manager for Telemarketing Communications of Montgomery, says the only thing their company has felt from the strike is a maintenance slowdown. From an operational standpoint, um, we really haven't experienced any problems at all. Uh, the majority of the AT&T network is automated, and the fact that we are broker in their network... For the most part, stay tuned for all the weather up next. Come on, Dodge Boys. A surprise visitor. Uh, what you want to see him for? We're supposed to get married. 
That woman just traveled 10,000 miles on the basis of your proposal. But you cannot avoid the issue by hiding in here. You're absolutely right, Bob. I'll be downstairs. I don't want to get mixed up in these domestic squabbles. Monday night at 11.05 on WKAB-TV. Sounds like something new is in the Jello freezer. New Jello fruit bars, delicious real fruit pureed, perfectly smooth, 100% natural, and only 45 calories. Lucky there weren't any coconuts. New things pop up in the Jello freezer. Paul, although we here in the Montgomery area are wishing for rain, there are those who are wishing the rain would stop. Especially in two states, uh, San Antonio and in Texas, where they had a lot of flooding, a train derailment as a re result of a, a rain-soaked bridge where the trains went off. Also, nice they kind of spread it around. Right, right, just a little bit all over there. Well, listen to this. In Shreveport, Louisiana today, about 100 homes and businesses uh, mm. flooded out. Uh, five inches of rain today, two more expected tomorrow. A lot of people out of their homes today, and uh, one man died as a result of trying to direct traffic on, in the chaos of that. So we're not getting that kind of rain. Maybe we can do a trade-out, give them the rain. <laughs> they take the humidity. I'm really? sure they would like it. Got up to uh, 90 degrees today with a low of 75 degrees. Right now, a pleasant 79 degrees with humidity at 60%. Uh, Winds out of the southwest at 5 miles per hour. Barometer is rising at 30.02 inches of mercury and no rainfall reported around Danley Field. Prattville did report a, a thunderstorm earlier this afternoon, so they got some moisture. We didn't get the moisture and boy, do we need it. Let's go to the satellite shot from uh, this evening and be able to show you this is a warm front into a cold front and that'll be dissipating and giving people there a chance of showers, but that'll be moving out and really not affecting our weather. Here's what we were talking about in Louisiana in, into uh, into Mississippi and into Alabama. There's some high cloudiness in Louisiana right now. As far as Alabama's concerned, just a lot of clouds that uh, really aren't amounting to anything. We've been under moist conditions, unstable air in the upper atmosphere, which is going to be giving us triggering showers as that daytime heating occurs. Let's go to a more local level, and we can see the warm front into the cold front. And here's where the heaviest uh, cloud cover is, but that's really not amounting much to us. Muscle Shoals did get around uh, two inches of rain today, the past 24 hours, and uh, Huntsville got about an inch and a half, but in Montgomery, double zeros, or even three zeros, so all the zeros add up. Let's go to the radar and be able to show you some of the heaviest tops, and right here in Mississippi, Greenville extending all the way to Columbus, Mississippi, and out here in uh, Georgia, near, pretty near Augusta, where they like to play uh, golf occasionally. As far as Alabama's concerned, just some widely scattered activity. Not too sure about if, if there's rain falling in Demopolis right now, but the indication is that they are have a chance of some thunderstorms. Look, let's look at some temperatures from around the area right now. 76 degrees in Mobile, 78 in Panama City, and maybe a, a nice evening to go down there and get some relief. 81 degrees in Dothan, 79 in the capital city, 79 in Birmingham, 80 in Huntsville, and 80 in Meridian. Those temperatures by tomorrow are going to be going up near 95 degrees expected high for tomorrow, but for tonight. Partly cloudy skies and thunderstorms. That's the way it's going to be for the next few days. A low of around 74 degrees with winds light and variable from the south. And Tuesday, mostly uh, cloudy skies, hot and humid with a high of 94 degrees. Winds out of the south at 10 miles per hour. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, a chance of thunderstorms. Lows around 72 degrees. Winds will be light Wednesday, hot and humid. The double H's, thunderstorms, 95 and 74. And of course, as that daytime heating comes up, it's going to be more prevalent. Extended forecast through Thursday. I wonder if any of you can guess it. How about hot and humid? The double H's. The, the, double, the double, double H's, H's double. hot and humid. I had another word for that, mega hume, <laughs> which, which is uh, just, you know, unbelievable amount of humidity. But that's what we're going to have in the next few days. Highs around 94 and lows around 74. So the energy bills will be um, right up there. So will the water bills. That's right. Okay, thanks, Paul. Ramblers from around the country are pulling into town for a week of sightseeing. They're called the Holiday Ramblers, a group of RV owners who enjoy the road. And they're holding their annual assembly here in Montgomery before they hit the road once again. Now we're going to go to Duluth, Minnesota, the International Rally, which will be held in July. From there, I'm going out west and then back into Oklahoma in October and back through this part of the country, headed for Florida in November. You're going to start all over again from start there? Start all over again. 
More than 300 couples are expected to attend this event. The Ramblers say they plan to tip with $2 bills while they're in town to demonstrate the contribution such meetings make to the local economy. When I first got this car, she only had 10,000 miles on her. Now she's got over 100, because I haven't found one I like better. My chew, that's different. Like a lot of folks, I used to chew Levi. But this Granger Select's got less stems. All you got to do is think refreshment. And you can move that can right into your hand. Come on, concentrate. Whoa. Nothing. Think harder. Think big refreshment. Can't you taste it? That's not happening. We'll take a break. Could you think? Down, slowly. Well, Chris, uh, one sport is over. Baseball is here. Hockey's Never around ends, the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so just go the whole ram it. Yeah, Hockey will stay around the corner to the south, I guarantee you that. But we got one that Southerners like a lot, baseball. That's where we start tonight. Montgomerians know all about College World Series baseball. And remembering back on the Division II Series here in town a few weeks ago, fans couldn't get enough of it. So tonight, a taste of the Division I variety. Championship time, Florida State playing Arizona for all the marbles in Omaha this evening. Arizona scored the game's first two runs, the second coming here. And the fun had just begun for the Wildcats. Mike Sinney's homer puts the white-clad cats up four to zip, and then those aluminum bats did their thing again. Gar Millay plinks this one out of Rosenblatt Stadium. And then, a little later on, adding insult to injury in the seventh, the cats virtually stole a run against Florida State. Tommy Hensel swipes home putting Zona up 7 to nothing, beating the throw and putting Seminole fans in a heap bad mood. Final score 10-2, joining Tro St Troy State as an 86 baseball champ, Arizona champions of Division I. Now to the scoreboard, let's start with the National League where Philadelphia and New York are tied up in the ninth inning. And Chicago-Pittsburgh, 5-5 in the ninth as well. Montreal, 3. St. Louis, 3. That game in the seventh. Houston-San Diego, the league-leading Astros, just getting started with the Padres. Cincy-LA, starting late out west. American League in the eighth. New York leads Detroit. Oakland and Cleveland tied up at 5. Toronto, one final in the junior circuit. Beat Boston 5 For us, he took a camera with him. Didn't do anything for his appetite, but he managed to catch the top team in the highway. This is a mouthful. Highway Division 3 of the Men's Softball League in action. Good time, Charlie's and White went into this game 16-1. Adams Drugs looking to knock them off. Charlie's down here 5-4 in the first when Roger Sweeney Montgomery hit an in-betweener that cleared the bases and gave Sweeney a workout and inside the park grand slam. Good time, Charlie's had the lead. Sound like a song. It's 8-5 at this point. Charlie's must lead the league in high fives, too. But Adams Drugs came back to win this despite the slam 17-15. It is only Monday, but this may end up being the softball game of the week. Albertville, Alabama native and New England Patriot John Hanna may be hanging him up soon. The former Alabama standout has decided to uh, possibly call it quits. He's into his 14th season in the pro uh, arena. Speaking to the Alabama Sports Writers Convention at Montevallo, Hanna said he'll play just because he loves it if he does decide to play. He'll have to love it a lot. Over the last two or three seasons, he's had two knee operations and a shoulder operation. He is considered by many one of the all-time great linemen in pro football. Fans of the Houston Rockets are not shouting number one tonight, but they were shouting when the team arrived back. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, for coming back. We promise next year we're going to do it, and we are still unbeatable. Fight that fight in game five. I think those guys showed the pretty good sports. I think they did. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. Wall Street posted the biggest one day loss ever today as institutional sell programs went into effect. The uh, Dow Jones average fell a record 45 points. The declining issues led gainers by a margin of six to one. Trading was active as about 124 million shares changed hands. Thanks for joining us. Have a nice evening.